A while ago I did a Ryzen PC build and it was basically a sweet spot gaming PC. It had a Ryzen 5 1400 CPU and a GTX 1060 in it. But it just got me thinking, what could I get on the used scene that would perform pretty similar to it but would of course cost a lot less? And thus, Project Eclipse was born. Hey everyone, this is Frank. Welcome back to Jaeger Tech. Today we have a Sandy Bridge build. That's right, we went Sandy Bridge on this one. Why? Because it basically gets you most of the performance of a modern platform, but for a lot less money. Let's be honest guys, Intel really haven't done a lot with performance in the last few years, in the last several years, and although features and efficiency have increased for plain old price to performance, it's really difficult to beat some of those older Intel platforms. And of the Intel platforms, Sandy Bridge kind of reigns supreme. It was a pretty decent performance game back then and we really haven't had much since. So what happens when you take one of those CPUs, you overclock the snot out of it, you stick it in a system with an older but pretty decent performing graphics card, can you get all the performance of a modern gaming system but for basically half the price? Well, let's find out. Let's start with the specs. At the heart of our system, we have an i5-2500K, so that's four cores and four threads of fully overclockable power. It was a really popular CPU back in its day, and games really haven't started to push past those first four cores. So at £49, it's pretty much a no-brainer. You can sometimes get them for less than that, but I was really struggling to find one for less than 50, so 49 it is. It's sitting in a P67 motherboard from Gigabyte. This was literally the cheapest motherboard I could find that I could overclock with on this platform. It's definitely not full featured. It doesn't even have a VRM heatsink, but as you'll see later, this really doesn't hold us back with our overclocks. And at 46 pounds from AliExpress, it's pretty difficult to beat. Next, we have eight gigabytes of RAM. I have a two by two gigabyte set that I got for 10 pounds off of eBay and a single stick of four gigabytes I got for 10 pounds off of eBay. I really wouldn't recommend mixing and matching RAM, especially if you're overclocking, it can really play havoc with your overclocks, but I actually didn't see any problems here, so I'm not gonna complain. To cool that magnificent beast of a CPU, we have the Thermolab Trinity CPU cooler. Never actually heard of this brand before, but it did a really good job. It has four heat pipes and a 130 millimeter fan and it did a really good job of cooling the 2500K when overclocked, and for 15 pounds off of eBay, it is excellent. You may already know, but I got the GTX 970 for this build. I love this graphics card. It was such an amazing card for price to performance when it came out, and it really holds up today. It compares to a GTX 1060 and RX 580, but especially compared to the 1060, it overclocks so much better um, than all those Pascal cards. This is just a basic open air cooled model from MSI and I got it for 120 pounds off of Gumtree. But it's not uncommon to see them go for that much so you can definitely pick one up yourself if you keep an eye out. When I tell you about the power supply and the hard drive, you're probably gonna be a bit annoyed. So I got the VS550 from Corsair power supply. Plenty of power for this build, really not that bad. And for the hard drive, I got a one terabyte Hitachi decent enough hard drive, but the reason you're gonna be annoyed is because I got basically both of these for free. Uh, I bought a build, sold a few parts out of it, and made I think 20 or 30 pounds profit, and then kept a load of parts, including these, to use in other builds. So this is essentially free, and I know that's probably gonna annoy a couple of you, but what am I gonna do, buy new parts when I have perfectly functioning ones just lying around, come on. For the case, I went for the Aero 500 from Aerocool. I got this off of Amazon for 35 pounds and I've wanted to pick this up for a while for a bill because it looks really damn good for the money and I'll have a review on my channel of this case. So go and check that out if you're interested, but basically pretty damn good. All right, that's enough of the specs. Let's get to cleaning up some of these parts, building the PC, overclocking it and seeing how it performs.
So the build went really smooth. That case is fantastic to work in. I really recommend it at that price point. It's definitely one of my favorite budget cases. I think if I was doing a build for a friend, I'd definitely recommend this one to them. As for the overclocks, we got 4.8 gigahertz out of that 2500K, which is pretty damn good. Although these CPUs can definitely go to five gigahertz and beyond. And we did have to bump it up to 1.4 volt to get 4.8 from this chip. So I think with a better motherboard and maybe a bit more luck on the silicon lottery, we could have done it with less voltage. But with that CPU cooler, temps were perfectly fine. In gaming, it was really only getting into the 60s. And I think under synthetic load, it gone into the 70s, but even that's nothing to worry about. For the GTX 970, I got a pretty good overclock out of that as well. With a core clock offset of 230 something megahertz, this boosted to well over 1500 megahertz. So 1500 is pretty decent for a 970, and this was boosting as high as 1568 in some situations. And that was with a memory overclock of 8000 megahertz. That was plus 500 on the memory clock all while staying in around the late 70 degree region with that cooler on there. Anyway, let's get on to the benchmarks. So to start with, I threw a couple of synthetics at it to see how well it did with those before I got onto a few games. All these games are relatively demanding and they were all run at 1080p. So let's see just how well it can perform. So those benchmarks really speak for themselves. I mean, at 1080p, mostly high settings, we are able to not just game, but we could even get away with some high refresh rate gaming. Over 110 FPS in Grand Theft Auto V at very high settings. Almost 100 FPS in Battlefield 1 at high settings. 
that's, those are really fantastic numbers. You get such an amazing experience if you were to pick up a high refresh rate 1080p monitor for this system. And Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, really fun game, really addicting, I like it a lot. And at 1080p medium settings, we were getting over 90 FPS. And I prefer to run it that way to stay a bit more competitive. But if you were to run it at higher, even very high settings, I reckon you could do that and get away with over 60 FPS, no problem which would just be an amazing experience. Again, that case, really fantastic. I love the way it looks. It performed really well, keeping all the components nice and cool. And I just really recommend it if you're on a budget. And really that statement goes for this whole build. If you can pick up something like this for around 280 pounds, you are gonna have such an amazing time. If you can get it overclocked, you. Seriously guys, high refresh rate 1080p gaming. We were getting around 100 FPS in all of those games. And for me, that's really where gaming is at. 100 FPS is an amazing experience. And if you're willing to do a bit of tinkering to overclock that processor, you can get so much performance out of it. So I'm gonna actually do a comparison video of this system versus the Ryzen system I mentioned earlier. The build log for that is actually on my channel already. And at the same time as this one, I'm going to release the comparison video. So I'm going to do that in a bit just after I've done this video, but my money is on the 2500K system. I bet this one will perform a little bit better. I think it's going to be similar, but I think this is going to just outperform it thanks to that overclock on the CPU. So if you want to see those, go and check out my channel. And hey, if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm going to do a lot more of these build videos and especially use builds because I think they're just so much fun to do and they're really interesting. So I'm going to keep them coming. And if you like this video, let me know down below with a like or a comment to let me know what you thought of it. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Frank Yeager with Yeager Tech. Have a good one.